go. Greetings and salutations. All oh, you gorgeous individuals, welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. And on the penultimate day of the 2024 World Championship, we get it. The anthem, the banger, the animation, Linkin Park X League of Legends. I think, you know, we might have thought we peaked when Imagine Dragons were collaborating, but Linkin Park in the midst of the new lineup, the new world tour, dropping a single with League of Legends. I didn't think I'd ever be living on this timeline, Mark. I didn't think so either, but I'm calling it right now. We can thank Arcane for this coming through for League of Legends. I'm calling it right here. This is my speculation. We know that Linkin Park was invited to the premiere of Arcane. They showed up. They were great big fans of League of Legends at that time. This type of stuff takes a long time to get under works and get in progress. I'm betting that a couple early conversations were laid down maybe shortly after or at the event type of situation. Regardless, here we are. Linkin Park, Heavy is the Crown, League of Legends, World Song 2024. So now uh, the question is, who wears the crown? Arcane, if, assuming this song gets fit in there. Is, is, is Vi getting it? Caitlyn becomes... Queen of Piltover, she does such a good job. I don't know if this will actually oh, be featured. I, I got, I got no, I got no spoilers. I got no spoilers for my predictions on Arcane season two. Uh, so initial reactions for the song, at least for me, uh, the song's great. I think it, uh, you know, as is always tradition, this is going to be spammed at the start, middle, and end of all the broadcasts throughout Worlds. It definitely uh, brings the hype, gets people fired up for before and after games. No question. Whenever we kind of look at these songs, it's now, over the last few years, been in tandem. You're looking at the song and then the video almost as a separate entity. Yeah, because it's such a, a big moment, right? To get this video, get the world song, where not only are you checking it on, hey, do I vibe with this song? Is this something I can groove to? Is this something that gets me hyped up? Is this also something, Ben, from the broadcast perspective that I can imagine playing from in between breaks, going to the desk, throwing some highlights on whatever? This works, this fits it for me, it's hype, it's still good. And then you check the music video part as well, which I think pretty much I want to say since Ignite, maybe since Rise really started it for a lot of people paying attention to that music video, wanting to see the story of last year told or some of the stories of some of these characters, some of these players that we see all the time and cheer and root for in this music video. And again, that is the type of path that we saw for League of Legends this time around. And we did get a sampling, let's call it a sampling of T1 story last year, a couple of the the bigger notes, but unfortunately, I think you and I can agree, missed out on hitting some of the better notes of T1's championship run. Yeah, again, the song, I think I'm good with. I'm ha happy to have it, happy to see it. The video, we've seen this kind of style of animation. Honestly, the last few videos, you know, they've been a little bit different, but having, so it can really be hit or miss having, you know, these esports pros in like medieval armor with all their weapons. And again, we were seeing this with Rise, but you had so much to tell with the slump of T1 from last year, the resurgence against a full LPL gauntlet, so many iconic plays. And the story in the video, it's a bit bland. It just, it just kind of feels like it's an LCK spring teaser or something. It's just T1 sitting on the throne and the challengers are approaching. It feels like there's so much more substance that could have been had, but it wasn't there. It feels like a strange choice as if they chose to tell this year's story of T1, right? That they have the crown already. They are the reigning world champion stepping in to this next event. That wasn't the case. Last year, they were not the reigning world champions. They were the ones that were defeated in the world championship. And then, to cap that all off, defeated multiple times by Gen G in the domestic finals as well, to cap it all off. And then, as you laid out, the whole path, the whole war against the LPL, standing against the LPL's strongest armies, and able to take it down on the path to the championship. I can't believe... They missed out on, on showcasing some of that type of story or way that you would animate it. Come on, we, we've seen Rise. We see all these ones where they zero it down. This would have been such an amazing moment to just draw this incredible army against T1, that whole story of the underdog they were against the LPL. 
And uh, the other thing, obviously, people talk about is when you have the band Linkin Park is thrown into the animated universe. We kind of, we saw this with the Arcane song. Uh, the enemy one, you saw Imagine Dragons were kind of dropped into that Arcane universe. I get that it kind of pulls away uh, from whatever story is being told. But for me, the story, again, the story wasn't that great. I actually thought the band looked better and cooler than the players did. They did look really good, and I think that uh, the only thing that I really didn't like about it in that sense is it just felt jarring to go from the story or, you know, what you were doing to then all of a sudden here's the cut of the band playing and screaming and yelling and all this type of stuff. I do think that the quality is obviously really high and really there for this type of thing, but that's also another moment where you go, okay, this time that we are spent on not only just animating it and putting it through of Linkin Park here, I'm talking about just purely the runtime that they're shown in this video that could have absolutely been used to tell more of that story for T1, the situation, the whole rise that was last year. But this video is not just about T1 and Linkin Park. We get also our, our appearances from a couple of our other guys. We get Caps making a nice little once again appearance in a world's video. And how about quick little LCS shout out to your boy Masu making an appearance. Yeah, I mean, of all the LCS guys to highlight you know over the years it's always been somebody like double lift probably and i get they wanted to go the actual domestic na talent coming in you would have thought maybe apa came in but obviously FlyQuest, the squad that won um the subtitle and you know what his hair looked damn good in animation shout out Demasu. it's amazing to see him in a video like this obviously caps is a dude who's earned it over the many many years and then bin another guy who you expect uh to be there but it just yeah like the rise you know it really told the story of the journey and even some of the other ones you know uh gods last year you really saw the story of death's career and how it you know came to summit at that incredible world championship run so expecting the story to be told a little bit better for t1 but now you look at it historically initial thoughts i know you got to watch this like five or six times to really fully grasp all the little easter eggs that are in it but where's this rank all time in terms of world songs we're gonna we're gonna rip through a little bit of a tier list here you know you got the classic s a b c d uh tier if you're combining song and video how do we feel about Heavy as the Crown? You know, it, it's one of those ones where I'm going to quickly check myself and realize, I think we've got over 10, what is it, 11, 11 now? songs, songs that Woo. we've been rolling through. So there is a bigger library to, to slot it into at this point and what you feel about it and, and where the quality obviously has, you know, drastically risen up in the production value and money that is spent into it. I'm feeling at the very least without, you know, kind of really going down that trip down memory lane quite yet. I'm feeling top five. I'm feeling pretty comfortable in that type of spot, which again, initial impression, pretty good place to be. Yeah, I think it's definitely more towards uh, the top half of these songs. I don't think we're going S tier. I mean, you really got to love a song to slot it in S tier right away. And again, we're all going to listen to this multiple times, probably hundreds of times by the time uh, the world championship is over. But what do you think? B, A? B -tier, B -tier. I'm, feeling, I'm feeling a comfortable B+. Plus. I'm feeling a comfortable B+, plus for this one. Again, for me personally, we don't need to go through the full numbers, but I'm rolling through that top heavy side. I'm going yeah. through big with the hitters of Rise. I'm going Legends Never Die. I'm going maybe a little bit controversial. I'm throwing Ignite in there, a personal favorite of mine, and one that I think is carried big time by the animation and the music video that went with it and the plays that they were showing. But this one, for me, getting it into that type of position and feeling about it, you know, at this point early, maybe we'll warm up a little bit more and see it as we as we get used to it at the event. Right now, I'm feeling comfortable at that B+. Plus. If it was just the song, I think it'd be even higher. Uh, Emily, the new vocalist, crushes it in this song. Uh, loved, loved hearing when she came in in that song. Uh, so we go backwards of the years. Last year, we had Gods, which... That one again, the storytelling, the video, absolutely S tier. The song was pretty good. I feel good about putting God's maybe one ahead at A. How do we feel about that? Yeah, I feel I feel good about that one. I almost had forgotten that God's was last year. I know. And then in, instantly you say it, and oh, it's playing in my head, and it's getting me feeling those juices. This one had for so worlds. many covers of different people doing it metal style, acoustic, lo fi, so many different ways. Oh yeah, God's is, God's is at least 
A plus for me. Come on, man. We're we're bordering line on the S tier for that. Uh, then the year before we go Star Walking. I know this was a controversial one because people wanted people wanted the beat to hit. They wanted the drop to be bigger. It was more chill. I saw someone on one of the comments being like, "We went from you know full banger to you're driving. Like it feels like you're driving through late at night." And I, I get that feeling. It was definitely a more chill anthem. And the video, you know, I think a lot of the guys didn't actually make worlds, and the video seemed a little bit random. So maybe B. Although, it'd be behind Heavy as the Crown if you do B for me. I, I, I got to give it a, a B minus, which is maybe a little bit harsh in that type of sense because I do like the song. I genuinely do. I think it is one that you can vibe to that you, as you laid out, it is a cruising type of song. But I'm not cruising through worlds. I'm ready to make some damage. I'm ready to make some swings. I'm ready to make my mark. Star Walking was not necessarily the song for that for me. And as, as the other thing is, of course, is when you look at it with the music video and not having some of those players get to Worlds, an unfortunate reality of the production time that it takes to get this type through and what type of unpredictability that happened in the League of Legends season. I think they're, they're pretty happy with the way that they chose to do Heavy as the Crown that T1 is at least making it oh to Worlds this God. time around to defend. Absolute disaster if they didn't make it. But we've had Faker be in a video before, and T1 wasn't even at the World Championship. Uh, but Star Walking, obviously getting Lil Nas was huge star power to get, so that was a huge boon for them. The negative was my man dropped Cassante. So Lil Nas brings in Cassante, and we have to suffer for the next three years. You asked me, would I rather live in a world with no Star Walking and no Cassante or this one? I'll take the no Star Walking, no Cassante, please. No offense, Lil Nas. Yeah, I'm taking that timeline as well. Uh, then we go back to 2021. We got, this is maybe the least memorable, Burn It All Down. And this is the video where Showmaker's the main character. The animation's sick. You got the 1v1 versus him and Chovy. And... The theme has been going on for a long time. These guys just look like the champions. Ever since Rise, they've constantly been trying to emulate it. I feel like this one hit the least. This is near the bottom for me. And listen, all of these are great. All the songs are good. All of them have tons of budget in them. But burn it all down. I'm, I'm saying hover in C, maybe even D. Yeah, my initial impression is when you said it is, I was like, Oh yeah, right. That that song, and, and then and, and then of course the music video and the music all comes back to mind, and you're remembering it. Uh, for me, I think it's a solid B, but I'm definitely in that favor of going. Maybe I'll change that grade because, as you said, I completely forgot about it. That type of thing. Where yes, I think back on it, and I'm like, okay, yeah, the music video is pretty hype. You got a couple of these, you know, the one v ones. Yes, as you laid out, the showmaker angle was a nice, interesting one. And I think that, again, one of the big things for me with it was the remixes that came out and the different interpretations of that song. I think that was one that took it to a new level. But ultimately, if I'm forgetting it, it's not really the, the right check mark that you need when definitely we go back in the history and some of these older ones are absolutely unforgettable. 2020 is the takeover one. This is the one where faker is training up his disciple t1's not even at worlds but still it's like the third year in a row that faker was the focal point one of the main characters of one of these videos uh i like the video the idea there was a bit more of a story you know faker training this guy and then you go through all these iconic things that culminates in the 1v1 against tien's lee sin and uh this one hit a little harder had a bigger drop than a lot of recent songs but again it. It felt like it lacked that special character that some of these worlds runs have had. I, I it's one of those ones where it's less about the song for me. I more remember the music video and that story that you laid out. Of course, of, of Faker being this you know masked hooded figure uh, on the street so lamp post and everything like yeah. Of course, there our version of Batman in the League of Legends world. This one, to me, again, is not really hitting, not really delivering quite the same levels that I want or that I expect or hold a world song in that video and that hype that it needs to generate to. I'm putting it slightly ahead of Burn It Down, you know, still in that C tier middle uh, of the pack one. Then we get to 2019. And for me, this one's at the bottom of the barrel. It's Phoenix. Fly, Phoenix, fly. Even though they predicted that FPX was going to win the World Championship, confirmed World Championship is scripted. But this is the video that you kind of had. Uh, it was Caps, Rookie, and Faker. You see them kind of 
dealing with their inner demons. And I just, I wasn't sold on the story and I wasn't fully sold on the song. Yeah, big agree for me on that one. I think for for Phoenix Fly, Phoenix Fly is one of those situations where I've heard it every now and then, right? They've used it occasionally and, you know, an intermission break or a throw to, you know, whatever. They've used it at some points during the broadcast. And I've been kind of like, oh, yeah, that's that song. And, uh, you know, kind of groove to it a little bit, but never to the degree that I think is necessary when we're talking about a, a song and a music video that needs to encapsulate that year be an anthem to get you going phoenix was absolutely not that for me uh luckily we had had such a blessed era of world songs before phoenix and we don't have any s tiers yet i think we're both going to agree first one to drop in is absolutely rise it has set the they've tried to emulate it for basically the next five years afterwards in terms of the storytelling but the animation Telling that story of Ambition, Samsung Galaxy, and the song, it helps that 2018 ended up being one of the most hyped world championships of all time. But across the board, check marks for Rise. Oh, absolutely. No questions about it. This one, I think for a lot of people, is their favorite world song of all time. And a big part of that is the song is a 10 out of 10. And the music video, well, it's 11 out of 10 going with the song and bringing it on through the stories that a way it told the way that it built itself up through that chain of incredible combatants and really got you know it got that message across of how crazy it is to have to make this climb make this rise to the very top of the mountain who was waiting there for ambition baker and t1 and yes just like we had of course this was a phenomenal song and has been one that riot has been chasing that secret sauce, that secret formula of success with this one. And they've even been doing it at, you know, final ceremonies, covers of it with different artists in years to come. That's how much it was beloved by the fan base. Uh, 2017 is probably the one that gets sang the most by people, whether it's a meme or not. Of course, it's Legends Never Die. This is one of the few that doesn't actually have pro players in the video. It's, uh, you know, it's Lisa and Garen and Ash, I think, just kind of training through. But I love being dropped in the lore, the universe of League of Legends as well to kind of hype it up. But the song, absolutely S tier. Flat out, I'm saying it right now. That has to be something that we get within either, you know, next year or two years from now. That's an angle that I think is missing in these world songs where, yes, of course, we love Rise. We love talking about, oh, show the T1 journey. You know, that's what we wanted in Heavy is the Crown. At the same time, if you can deliver what Legends Never Die did and give us these slices of this universe, of the lives that we see and play, of these characters, that's what people want to see. And that's what draws them in. And it was so gripping the way they told these stories and showed, it showed them, you know, Ash, Lee Sin, Garen. And then again, the hitting hard hitting vocals coming through for legends never die and of course I, I mean, just legends never die come on man that is an epic thing to say and to have that as that anthem really loved it i instantly for me a classic that's an st you put it ahead of rise behind rise Ooh. that's the real i'm i'm, I'm buttoning it right behind rise it, it's one of those yeah. ones where i think rise was just so phenomenal and such a success that it has to be at that tippity top and uh, you know maybe we'll have a little conversation about whether my personal favorite ignite gets up there but we are gonna say legends never dies is right just up close i ignite is a controversial one because a lot of people i always see saying it's the worst world song by far i think that's just people who don't like edm don't like zed yes the style the genre of music is a little different than most of the other ones that we've had for worlds although it's been transitioning towards that a little bit as well but i loved ignite as well uh the music video absolutely loved the animation again because it was different they were trying something new i loved the song it was you know before rise showing these iconic moments throughout the world championship i'm not gonna slot it s tier but i think it's a comfortable a oh I'm, I'm i'm taking it all the way i don't care if it's controversial i'm putting the s tier on it but i'm not i'm not gonna go too crazy throwing it over rise type of situation but this is personally one of my favorites of course too i have heard the discourse of the people that uh, that dislike it you know do or die what is this stupid line whatever all these type of things and 
Okay. I All of them have some it. cheesy lines. That's the point of these anthems. It's the territory you're going to get into, but I think that the way that it hits, and especially with that music video, and for the time, as you laid out, really the first time that we did get to see this type of style or this type of path where it is almost, it's not quite Rise, but it certainly is one showing us the players and then having them be the champions and going through those major moments that they made. That was such an incredible one. You know, the rumble at the base of Kha'Zix. We had, you know, the odd one dropping in on Elise right as the beat drops to get the band. Oh, come on, guys. This is one of the times where I'm, I'm saying peak, peak cinema for yeah. League of Legends, the, riot, the, the music video going on through with Ignite. I think the animation style is like maybe only rise is comparable but compared to you know even heavy as the crown recently the last couple they felt a little bit cheesy having the guys dressed up or looking like the champions the way they did it in ignite that was the way to do it I, I, i'll give it we'll even it out i'll give you the a plus i'll put it ahead of gods we'll we'll even out our two opinions on it but we both love ignite it's not overrated guys it's a great one uh only two left Worlds Collide is the other forgotten about one. I think the song is great. Riot just didn't invest anything in the video. The video is just videos pulled from the World Championship. It's it's good. I have a problem where about a quarter of the time I listen to it, it starts to lull me to sleep. And then the other 75%, uh, you know. It's how they get you through the ad breaks. It's, it's got its hooks in. I'm starting to vibe. I'm starting to groove. starting to dance with it. Look, I, I like it. I think it's an early edition, of course, and, and it's one of those really quick ways to examine and say, okay, this is good. There's quality. They were on to something with these world songs. You just had to take it to another level, what, as we did with Ignite and further on more in the history of the world song. I'm going to slot it C tier in between TakeOver and burn it all down. Uh, last one, and still a lot of people's favorites, still the most views on YouTube, I think it's like 480 million now. It is Warriors with Imagine Dragons. This, you know, as Rise set the precedent for emulating that style afterwards, this was the one that started the whole world's anthem, having a song, and really influenced other esports as well. I think we both got to agree. It's got to go S tier. The question is, where among Rise and Legends never die? Oh, I, I'm, I'm putting it after it. But maybe that's just because my situation excuse me, with it, was from the other side. I wasn't into League of Legends at the time. I heard Warriors first time on regular road Ten years ago, radio. Now. Ten years and ago. I, and it still was like, oh, yeah, this song's dope. And then I get into League of Legends and I find out that's what's going on. I see the music video. Oh, it was fantastic. An early era giga banger for Riot Games and, of course, a good anthem type of song for this world's event and you know for esports competition all these type of things i gotta give it to it i gotta put it in that s tier i think that we have gone further and better with legends never die with rise but that's obviously a, a thing about time and a thing about reflection to be able to know where you did and how to improve what to do different what to try all sorts of things like that gotta give credit to imagine dragons uh and warriors as the og world's anthem yeah, and 100%, you're right. It was just playing on radios like League of Legends, esports, not related. Some of them over the years have been like that too. Obviously, imagine Heavy as the Crown is going to do pretty damn well outside of the League of Legends obvious uh, audience, obviously having Linkin Park associated with it. But again, even Phoenix in that D tier, every one of these Riot has obviously invested a lot in. I think Phoenix is the one that came really late too. So people had to wait a long time and then were a little bit disappointed. But they're always high quality, always something to look forward to. And we'll see what the thoughts are uh, for Heavy as the Crown years later or even just weeks later after we've heard it uh, multiple times. But this is it. This is the final preview. Next time we're doing a video, there's going to be actual games we're talking about from the World Championship, Mark. Buckle up, folks. Get your snackies. Get your drinks. Get everything prepared. Go to the bathroom. Get your pickums done. Wash your hands, right, right? And everybody get a good night's sleep. Get ready for this one. You're going to be up bright and early. I don't care where you are. Actually, you're probably not going to be up bright and early in a couple places in this world. <laughs> Let's all group together and just say it's bright and early. Let's get ready for this one. EU Worlds, buckle up, baby. It's time.
We'll be here to break it all down, but that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.